Hello. It's great to be with all of you again. I'm Lana Kay, and we have a great show planned for you today. You will be learning the ins and outs of waste recycling. With us, we have Ann Gray. Welcome to the program, Ann. Thank you. Now, Ann is the education specialist for Rumpke Re Waste and Recycling. So, Ann, I'm so glad you're here to explain how to do this right. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thank you for the invitation to be with you and your viewers. Um, I am the education specialist for Rumkey. I've been with Rumkey for about 11 years. So this is always a great opportunity to inform our customers what can go in that recycling container and what shouldn't go in that recycling container. So again, thank you for this opportunity. And before we start on our tips, because she has many for us, and you will be surprised at some of them. Some things you thought yes will be no, and some things you thought no are yes. I've heard Ann speak before. But Ann, before our tips, how important to our environment is recycling? Recycling is such an easy thing to do, relatively speaking, and it can make a huge difference. Because first of all, it can save space in landfills, which is really, really important to save that space for material where there is just not a market where it could be made into something else. Also, it can save natural resources. It conserves energy. Um, believe it or not, recycling can create jobs. So there are just a lot of positive ripple effects, really, when people recycle. So you are all for, if we're not recycling, think very hard about yes. beginning because it will mean so much to our environment it does. in it, many ways. It, mean, it means a lot. It's a very important thing to do. Well, I know she's got a lot of tips, and you know we usually have around 20 minutes. So, Anne, without further ado, what are some of our major things that you would like us to know? Well, first of all, I know that people want to do the right thing. People, a lot of times, know that recycling is important and they want to do the right thing, but we want to make sure that they have the correct information so that their recycling efforts really count. And one of those things that we'd like to talk about is making sure that the material is as loose as possible in your recycling bin. A lot of times people are trying to be very neat and tidy with their recycling and they may place that material in a plastic bag, for example, a grocery bag in their recycling bin. But what happens when that comes to Rumpke Recycling, which is located in St. Bernard, um, they're going to have to, our employees are going to have to rip open that bag to get out that material. Now, keep in mind that conveyor belts are moving by at about 60 tons per hour. So that takes a lot of takes a lot of time to do that. And then what happens once they rip open these bags to get the material out, the bags are so light and fluffy, they're flying all over the place and they can get caught in our equipment. I think we've all seen plastic bags caught in trees in our neighborhoods and that's just the type of thing that happens. So one of the tips that we say is please place that material as loose as possible in your recycling bin. And we do have a chart today that goes through the materials that we accept. I know because of the questions that I always receive from customers when I'm out and about doing presentations, people have a lot of questions about the plastic. And this is one thing that you need to remember about plastic. It has to be a bottle or a jug before we can accept that into our recycling um, program. So I wanted to give you some examples of some plastic items that we get every day, and we know people's intentions are right, but these are things that we can't accept. For example, a yogurt container. You know, it's not a bottle or jug. This little container maybe had applesauce in it or pudding, something like that. That would be a no. The tub, maybe it had, this one had cream cheese in it, whipped topping, um, butter, margarine, whatever it might be, that would also be a no. At Rumkey, we call this container a clamshell. This probably had blueberries, strawberries, something like that. All of these things we would say a no. Probably the biggest culprit, the biggest villain for us in our recycling uh -oh. containers, uh -oh. as I mentioned, are the grocery bags. So please, we encourage people to recycle these by taking them back to the grocery store. Usually, if you pay attention when you go into the store, you're going to see a container there where these bags can be placed, and they will be recycled. We just really, really ask you not to put them in your recycling bin. Why, why is that separate, and why should that be? these be separate? This, again, um, part of the problem is that these are just such a, 
an issue when they come to our facility and with all of the equipment that we have because we have so many pieces of equipment with rotating parts. So when the bags are ripped open and the material is taken out, these kind of start flying around very loosely and they wrap around the equipment. So a few times a day when the plant is not operational, employees have to climb in and clean off all these bags. So please recycle them by taking them back to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. That would be appreciated. And I wanted to elaborate a little bit on these plastic containers and why we only want plastic bottles and jugs. There are different methods of making plastic containers. There's blown mold, injection, and extrusion. And the companies that we deal with, and most recyclers like Rumkey in our part of the country, want containers made by the blown mold method. So that would be the bottles and jugs. So at least right now, we are not able to accept these items. So please remember that. And that is so surprising. It, and is, it does surprise they people. Seem, you know, like this seems... It's plastic. Yes, sure. So, mm -hmm. so we're going to recycle, but no. No. And another thing that we know confuses people is that a lot of times people will say, well, I put these items in my recycling bin because it has the recycling symbol on the bottom. Well, that triangle made out of chasing arrows with the number in the center really just indicates the type of plastic that this container is. It doesn't necessarily mean that it can be recycled or that it can be recycled everywhere. So the best thing to do, just remember this rule of thumb, if it's plastic, the container has to be a bottle or jug. These items are not acceptable. And uh, how did we start believing that those arrows are okay? Because, well, I think... Because I, I, know. I thought they were okay. No, and I, I think part of it is that different companies maybe promote that that's always what it means. I mean, they're wanting their products and their containers to be to recyclable. To be sure. Yeah, and so that could be part of it. And there may be areas of the country where these things are acceptable. But for us, as I mentioned here, um, we can't accept them. And, and hopefully... In the future, things may change, but right now, this is where we are. Okay. A couple of other things that I wanted Would to mention. Would you learn a lot? You may be surprised, I thought, with some of this. Um, also, styrofoam. This cup has kind of seen better days, but I just wanted to emphasize we, we don't accept styrofoam at Rumkey. Um, we don't have a market for it, and that's really a basis for our acceptable items. We have to be able to sell this material to companies who will then make new products because that's what recycling is all about. You take something old and turn it into something, something new. new. And so, unfortunately, we can't accept styrofoam. Also, aluminum foil. This is just a little ball of aluminum foil. We do get a lot of this, even though we accept aluminum beverage cans, like an aluminum can of Coke or Pepsi or whatever, we can't accept this aluminum foil, nor can we accept like a, an aluminum pie pan or an aluminum roaster pan that maybe you would roast the turkey at Thanksgiving. The aluminum in this item and those two products are so different from the chemistry in an aluminum can that the companies that we're selling aluminum to prefer not to get this. So this would also be a no. Okay. That is that is so remarkable. The things that we thought, I told you, the things we thought yes or no, and some of the things that we thought um, or we didn't think are. are. So and, and she's gonna she has more for us. Well I wanted to show you just this is some information that we provide a lot of times to our customers, either in mailers or if you look on your recycling container, a lot of times a sticker with this information will be affixed to that. And of course this information is on our website, rumkey.com. But I want to go through the different categories. You see the paper that, that is listed at the top. So that would be newspapers, magazines, junk mail, um, paper bags, um, cardboard boxes, of course. All of these different things can be accepted. A thing, uh, an item like a Cheerios box, we call that paperboard. That's also acceptable. And what we say at Rumkey as far as paper is concerned, if you can rip it or if you would add water to it and that paper product starts to break down, we can accept it. One item that I wanted to kind of point out is the pizza box. We get a lot of questions about pizza boxes. Sometimes in a family, there's a lot of dispute. You know, should we recycle that pizza box? Should we not? And this is what we say at Rumkey. We ask that you just assess that box. If it's really greasy and messy with cheese and sauce, please just throw it away in the trash. That's more trouble than it's worth to us. But if it's not too bad 
or if maybe you can retrieve the lid of that pizza box and that's not messy, then go ahead and put that in your recycling bin. So all of these paper things that are listed up there are recyclable. We don't want paperback books and we also don't want hardback books. Those are just items that we cannot but accept. But there's paper in there. If you had, like if you wanted to take the time to rip the pages out of a book, we can accept that paper, but the binding in a paperback book and the binding in a hardback book is just not difficult. not acceptable, right. that too, too difficult to recycle. Right. Okay, I understand that part now. And then we've got the plastic again, and, and we talked about the plastic bottles and jugs. One thing that we get asked a lot um, are the lids, the plastic lids on plastic bottles and jugs. We can accept those. This is a little bit different than maybe five or ten years ago, but the container needs to be placed in the recycling bin with the lid on, not loose in the bin. We don't want the lid loose in the bin. So if you want to recycle that milk jug and the lid on the milk jug, make sure that you put the lid back on the container and then that can be recycled. The newest item that we can accept in our program are cartons, like a milk carton, juice cartons, um, wine, broth, whatever. Those are acceptable now. That is particularly gratifying to me because I'm in the schools a lot of times talking to students about the three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle. Well, then they would go into the cafeteria, have their lunch, drink their milk in those cartons, and literally thousands of those every day were being thrown away in our area. So now if the school is recycling, those cartons can be placed without the straws in the recycling Wonderful. bin. Wonderful. That's great. a great thing. It's that a great is thing. Great. How do the kids accept this. How, are the kids interested? I know you, you look over the group and mm -hmm. see, do I have their interest? Are they? Children are very interested in recycling. They understand, they understand why it's important and I think children actually like rules. I think they like order. So if you instruct a child, this should be recycled, this goes here, this is trash, this goes in, in the trash can. They like knowing that and they like acting on it. And what they really enjoy doing is going home and talking to their parents about it and instructing them. Well, that shouldn't go in the trash. That's something that can be recycled. And that's a good thing because we know that message is then being carried back into the households that and that recycling can increase. I would not think of you going to schools and I think that's wonderful. We try to do that a lot. Yeah, We're in the schools a lot. So then we wanted to go on to the cans. We definitely accept aluminum and steel and bimetal food cans. Um, one item that sometimes surprises people are the aerosol cans. We ask that those cans be totally empty and if you could remove the little plastic tip and the plastic lid on an aerosol can, that would be helpful for us. Anytime you combine two types of material in one container, it's a little bit more difficult. So we ask that you do that. Also, if that aerosol can contain anything that you might consider hazardous or spray paint, we don't want that. Something like maybe um, deodorant or room freshener or PAM that you would spray in a, a frying pan. Those aerosol cans are fine. Then do we throw away the, the little tip yes. and, the, and we don't put that at all? We throw that no. in our Thank real waste. Thank you for bringing that up, yes. The plastic tip and the plastic lid, just throw it away, but then put the em empty aerosol can in your recycling bin. And then we get into the, the glass bottles. Um, all different colors, the amber, blue, green, clear, all of those different colors are acceptable in our program. And there's a real push to recycle more glass. Part of that effort is really to be a job creator. If Rumkey is accepting more glass, we have more glass to sell to companies that make fiberglass, that make bottles and jars again. So more jobs might be required to do that. So this is definitely something that we've been promoting in the last couple of years. I wanted to make sure that people understand that even though we accept glass, we don't want mirrors because a mirror could have mercury in it. We don't want a, a drinking glass that you might have at home because it could have crystal in it. And we also don't want windows because that may have lead. So the companies that were selling these very simple glass products like a pickle jar or a wine bottle, something like that, it's just a very simple glass product that they're going to use then to make something new. So all of these things, and that's quite a lot, all of these things can be placed in your recycling bin. Isn't that great? And, and so, and there's no, we don't want any caps on these. That, that's one thing that's a little bit different than the plastic. No, say for example you have that glass jar is a spaghetti sauce jar. So you've got the glass jar and the metal lid. Again, it's that whole principle of two different types of material in one container. 
that metal lid actually can go loose in your bin, and we would prefer that you do that because all of this glass is going to eventually go to our facility in Dayton, Ohio, and they have magnets. When that broken glass is transported from the Cincinnati recycling facility to Dayton, they have magnets that can effectively pull out those metal lids if for some reason the metal lids get mingled in with the glass. However, the plastic lids, of course, they would not be able to do that with a magnet. So the plastic lids need to remain on the container. The metal lids should be loose in the bin. And then that would be really helpful to us. So we, Anne, we're starting to get uh, low on time. Tell us what you want us to know. Um, probably the most, one of the most dear things to your heart, the most important things to your heart. I know you're really, you really, you know, you're a great advocate for this. You believe in it. What, what's something you'd like to leave with the viewers? I think one thing that I would like to suggest is that if you are uncertain about something as to whether Rumpke accepts it or not, I would say don't put it in your recycling bin and then make every effort before your next pickup to find out if that's something that's acceptable. We, we receive things like clothing and shoes and wire and Christmas lights and all of those things are very, very difficult for us to deal with. So if people would just maybe think, I'm not sure that Rumpke accepts this and look at our website or Facebook us or go on Twitter and ask that question, then, then you'll have the proper information. And, and this will really make your recycling count because some of those things can bring our operations to a screeching halt. And what an eye-opening show you have given us today. I know so many of you now understand that we've had Anne with us. So thank you for coming out and sharing all this wealth of information, Anne. Thank you so much for having me. You've been listening to Anne Gray, Education Specialist, Rumpke Waste Management and Recycling. Her contact information will follow. I want to say one thing, we don't mention prices on our show, but recycling charge is very, very minimal. I was surprised because, as I said, I heard Ann at a former talk, and so then I looked into it, and I couldn't believe it. So it's very economical. Check in your town. And I'd like to say one more thing in closing. Um, every year at the end of the year, I like to tip special people and uh, in my life that have helped me out throughout the year. And I want you to think of this. One day I was sitting in my front yard and my waste management driver came by and these guys, it just occurred to me, we take so much for granted. They'll just be here and yeah, you know, and, and then we bring the can back up. But it was a terrifically hot day and here he came as they always are. They're in tremendous heat, they're in the bitter cold. And what, just imagine, what would our environment be like without Rumpke and its drivers? I mean, our, our neighborhoods would be unlivable. It's just that simple. Uh, it, it only takes you, I missed one week, and, mm -hmm. and one week, and we had bags all around the can, and, you know, it was in one week. So just imagine what these guys do for us, you know, every day. So, again, you know, I hope you learned a lot from Ann today. Uh, don't take our Rumpke. It is a wonderful company. Uh, they have the our environment is utmost in their mind. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Rumpke, Ann. And as always, you be happy and you keep smiling, and I'll see you soon.